Welcome back. 2020 has been an exceptionally tough year, not least for the mice sector, but prospects for 2020, 2021 look much brighter. So what can we learn from past crisis recovery? Where can the sector find the resilience to bounce back and how can it reinvent itself in the future? Philippe Legrain is a British political economist and writer. He specialises in global and European economic issues, notably globalisation, migration, the post-crisis world and the euro. So we couldn't really get a better person to discuss this. Let's welcome Philippe Legrain. It was known as the Roaring Twenties, the Jazz Age, and in France, as Les Années Folles, the crazy years. It was a decade of booming economies, of rapid innovation as the likes of cars, moving pictures, and radio took off, and of frantic socialising and wild parties, as memorably captured by F. Scott Fitzgerald in The Great Gatsby. And yet the 1920s began on an even grimmer note than the 2020s, with the fourth wave of a lethal influenza pandemic that killed more than 50 million people worldwide, often young people uh, in their prime, and with societies still reeling from the carnage of the First World War. So now, at the end of a dismal 2020 and a truly disastrous year for the mice sector, that historical experience of a post-pandemic boom is one of several reasons for hope. It goes without saying that this year's coronavirus pandemic, which makes close contact between people dangerous and large gatherings of people perilous, is a catastrophe for an industry that is based around bringing large groups of people together. For someone like me, who earns a living in part uh, from speaking at events and conferences like this, it's been a very difficult year. For those of you who earn a living from organizing, uh, hosting, uh, or supplying uh, events, conferences, and trade fairs, it has doubtless been an unprecedented challenge. But while 2020 is surely the worst year for the meeting sector since the Second World War, Prospects for 2021 are much, much brighter. There are now not one, but two or even three uh, promising COVID vaccines that are set to be rolled out uh, next year, with several more uh, in the pipeline. And while some argue uh, that even after the pandemic passes, that we are zooming to a permanently distant future in, we, in which we interact almost in entirely through screens uh, rather than face to face. That is highly unlikely. If anything, after a year of social distancing and self-isolation, the need and desire for human contact will be greater than ever before. At the same time, the crisis does provide an opportunity to rethink how the mice sector operates, to embrace some of the possibilities opened up by digital technologies, to explore exciting new options, all while capitalizing on the sector's enduring strength, creating connections between people. So my message is simple. There is light at the end of the tunnel. In fact, next year is set to be a year of recovery, resilience, and reinvention for the meeting sector. Let's start with the big picture of recovery. The collapse of the global economy this year was bigger, faster, and broader than during the financial crisis of 2008, and even 
the Great Depression of the 1930s. But after this short, very sharp shock, the rebound is likely to be uh, much stronger and more vigorous. In fact, by the time of next year's IBTM world, business activity is likely to be back to normal. While the 2008 financial crisis was followed by a long period of economic stagnation, the current crisis is very different. It wasn't due to underlying weaknesses in the economy. It was due to the huge shock of a pandemic for which Western governments uh, in particular were wholly unprepared. And once the pandemic passes, there is every reason to think that economies will bounce back. We've seen unprecedented support measures from governments. And thanks to them, household finances are in decent shape. Unemployment has remained low. And there is plenty of pent-up spending that is waiting to be unleashed. And while many businesses are suffering, few have gone bust. So they will be in a position uh, to capitalize on that resurgent demand next year. And as mass vaccination programs are speedily rolled out, COVID restrictions are eased and normal life resumes, economies re will rebound. In fact, we saw that already uh, during the lull uh, in infections uh, in Europe uh, during the summer. And government policy is likely to remain supportive for the foreseeable future with ultra low interest rates, credit guarantees uh, for businesses and fiscal support uh, for households. So two reasons to be positive about prospects of 2021 is that the pandemic will pass uh, while uh, government uh, support uh, will endure. A third reason is past experience with the aftermath of pandemics. As I've already mentioned, the devastating influenza pandemic of 1918 to 20 ushered in the Roaring Twenties. The lethal flu pandemic uh, of 1957 to 58 was less severe. It still killed around a million people uh, worldwide. And what we saw, at least in the US, is that economic activity first collapsed by 4% uh, towards the end of 1957 by 10% at the beginning of 1958, and then it rebounded uh, very strongly uh, by 8% uh, over the following five quarters. And more recently, the SARS epidemic in 2002-03, which was mostly contained to East Asia. Very strong short-term hit, especially in Hong Kong. Very strong rebound afterwards. The final reason uh, to be positive about prospects for a post-COVID future in 2021 is a situation in East Asia right now. China in particular has successfully suppressed the virus and it's said to end the year uh, with an economy th that is larger than it was 12 months ago. So the big picture for next year is of a strong economic recovery. And for the meeting sector in particular, uh, that, re that recovery is likely to be particularly pronounced. The MICE sector has basically been put on ice this year. And next year, it's set to roar back to life. Again, just look at China. While many events this year uh, were cancelled, next year there is already a full program of events planned. So 2021 is set to be a year of economic recovery. Yet some people question the resilience of the MICE sector, its ability to bounce back. In particular, they argue that technology is doing away for the need to, to people to meet in person, whether in offices, uh, on business trips, 
or indeed at events, conferences, uh, trade fairs, and so on. Yeah, it's true. The past year uh, has shown many businesses that at least in the short term, uh, that they can cope much better with remote working uh, and distance meeting than they might have expected, thanks to the likes of Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and Slack. But it's one thing to temporarily employ technology to interact when the alternative is no interaction at all. And quite another to permanently and solely employ technology for meetings when face-to-face -face meetings are possible. Zoom is great. Thank goodness it exists. But for all its convenience, it's a pale shadow of face-to-face -face interaction. It's stilted, disjointed, impersonal, unspontaneous. Among other things, you can't read the room. You can't connect with your neighbor. You can't bump in to new contacts and clients over coffee or pick up golden nuggets of information from other people's chatter. For sure, Zoom and other companies are now trying to replicate online every aspect of physical conferences, from keynote presentations, exhibitor booths, breakout sessions, one-on-one uh, -on -one networking, ticketed entry. Here in the UK, there's a company called Hopin, which has developed a particularly advanced virtual events platform. Uh, a competitor is Cube, Q-U-B-E, which offers kind of virtual environments which are a bit like immersive uh, computer games. And yes, virtual event platforms allow for a much richer user experience than uh, a Zoom webinar. And yes, there will doubtless continue to be a market for online-only events once the pandemic passes. But once face-to-face -face interaction is possible again, in-person meetings and live events are likely to be much more resilient than many people now think. In fact, the more that we mostly interact online, the more we are likely to value in-person contact. Just look at the music industry. The boom of low-cost, convenient, ubiquitous music streaming has hardly destroyed live music. On the contrary, uh, live concerts and music festivals are more popular than ever before and able to charge ever higher prices. Thus, as Zoom meetings and webinars proliferate, live experiences and in-person social contact are likely to be more valuable than ever before. Let's face it, the coronavirus pandemic has hardly undermined the desire for human contact. On the contrary, most of us have been so starved of social contact over the past year that we're absolutely desperate to go out and meet people in person again. And of course, nor can you sample uh, the physical wares at a trade fair over the internet. Thus, while this event is virtual, and that's great, and it's much, much better uh, than no conference at all, I'm sure that next year, IBTM World will be happening in person in a real conference center again. So next year is said to be a year of recovery and resilience for the meeting sector. And it also ought to be a year of reinvention. Catastrophic disruptions don't come much greater than this year's pandemic. But the upside of disruptions is that they provide an opportunity for the mice sector to rethink how it does business, to explore different options, and to stimulate new and better alternatives. 
Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know your business better than you do. But so let me instead highlight some of the questions uh, that you ought to be asking and point to some of the interesting developments that you might want to find out more about. How can the meeting sector make better use of technology to enhance the event experience? What kind of exciting new hybrids of live and online are possible? And how can you find new ways to wow your clients and build stronger connections to your brand? Those are the, some of the big questions for 2021 and beyond. And you can start to find answers in the PAC program that there is for you here at IBTM Virtual. I mean, even in the pre-pandemic world, events increasingly had apps that provided useful information like the agenda and location maps, which facilitated online connections and helped organize real-world meetings. And we'll doubtless see much more of that. And we're only scratching the surface of what is possible. So for example, event apps could integrate with LinkedIn to make personal contacts simpler. Or if it's a trade fair, it could integrate uh, with Alibaba. And over time, event apps could help organizers and sponsors build a much better profile uh, of uh, participants and indeed a record uh, of all uh, their contacts. Another promising possibility is exciting new hybrid events in which online interaction complements physical conferences. So you could see, for example, uh, some people attending an event in person and others doing so and interacting online. And in that kind of world of hybrid events, the virtual event platforms seem like much less of a threat. On the contrary, uh, they can help complement uh, your existing business. A third area uh, with huge potential is to find ways uh, to liven up uh, real-world conferences, exhibitions, and trade fairs in ways that cannot be rep replicated online. It's an opportunity to experiment with new formats explore exciting new locations, and combine events uh, with social activities and cultural programs. Because while a virtual events program may be able to replicate elements uh, of a physical exhibition center, it can't capture the thrill of visiting Barcelona, which was meant to host IBTM World this year. The food, the sightseeing, the, so the socializing, and all the cultural activities. So let me leave you with the following takeaways. Next year is set to be a year of recovery, resilience, and reinvention for the meeting sector. And to make the most of it, you need a fourth arm. Resolve. The resolve to believe in yourselves. The resolve to better yourselves. And the resolve to bounce back bigger and stronger. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Philippe, for your thoughts on what may lay ahead in the coming year. That was a pretty optimistic message, actually. Um, you're joining us here in the studio. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you? I can, yes. Fabulous. OK, so we're going to um, we've had a couple of comments and questions come in. So um, let me start with the first one, which is um, what role will Brexit play in the recovery across Europe? Uh, well, I don't think uh, that Brexit uh, is a positive uh, for the economy either of the UK uh, or for um, uh, the EU. Um, in, in fact, it's going to be uh, a disruption. Uh, and we don't know the scale of the disruption because we don't know uh, if there's going to be um, a deal uh, or not. Uh, but, you know, an immediate consequence that could happen already uh, is that um, uh, without a deal, uh, British people will no longer even uh, be able to travel to the EU after the 1st of January 
um, while uh, pandemic uh, travel restrictions uh, remain uh, in place. Uh, so it's very important that, that, that there is a deal um, uh, and uh, that um, uh, so that it, it poses less of a disruption um, to the economy than otherwise. But the big picture next year is whatever happens with Brexit, COVID is so much bigger a shock um, in the short term. The collapse has been so dramatic this year, uh, not just in Britain and Europe, but around um, uh, the world, uh, that the recovery next year as mass vaccinations uh, take uh, place uh, is going to be uh, very, very, very strong uh, indeed. OK, thank you for that. And then just one last question, because we, we don't have long, but I just wanted to get another question in. Um, uh, so the comment is, I do like your optimism. However, I have doubts that the mice sector or well, I should, actually, I think what they mean is um, they believe that the mice sector will suffer severely still in 2021, but will recover in 2022 and onwards. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think obviously for now, um, uh, the, we're still in the grips of the pandemic and therefore uh, the beginning of 2021 is going to be difficult. Uh, the recovery is going to gather pace um, uh, throughout uh, the year. And certainly, as I said, a year from now, um, I think that things um, uh, will be humming along uh, nicely again. If you look at financial markets, which are forward looking, you can see that um, the share price of Relex, which is the odor, owner of Reed Exhibitions, which is organizing this event, you can see that its share price has bounced back dramatically um, uh, since uh, the vaccine ex announcement, and that it's actually only about 10% lower than it was uh, when it was very high at the beginning of the year. So financial markets certainly are looking forward uh, positively and anticipating much better times ahead. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like if you're the man that's like looking at all the moving parts in this and you're positive, that means that maybe the industry can be positive as well moving forward? Uh, ab absolutely. I don't want to minimise how difficult um, uh, this year has been and how it continues to be. Uh, I, I'm sure that you know, you're suffering uh, immensely and indeed on a personal basis um, I, I've suffered too. Um, uh, but there is light at the end of the tunnel uh, and uh, throughout next year things are going to get much, much better. Excellent. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for, but I'm sure you'll join me in thanking Philippe for sharing his wisdom with us. Thanks, Philippe. Now, we now have a short break, so go and stretch, step away from the screen, make a coffee or a cocktail, depending on your time zone, and I'll see you back here in a few minutes for more great speakers, discussion and debate. <laughs>